Okay. <clears throat> yes, there will be a YouTube live video, and if you really can't hear, it's a good idea. Uh, Pete, are you able to give me the link to the stream? Pete's going to give me the stream. Now, Ems, we are going to be talking about operations and, um, and the engineering of the lab. But there will be questions on some of the technical issues. We're going to be talking about, well, I hope we're going to be talking about um, I hope we're going to be talking about things like EEP, um, talking about... Um, we do pronounce it EEP. EEP, that's the name. <laughs> yes. EEP. EEP. Yes. I think that was what we all said at Fantasy Fair <laughs> when we realised that all the lighting had changed. And people started saying, the stars are square. Okay, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to give you the stream that it's on today. And I'm going to rely on people picking that up and kind of feeding it in at intervals. Uh, can I ask people not to do... Um, gestures that take up a lot of screen space. Sorry, but I'm trying to follow chat and it's it's kind of quite difficult if it suddenly zooms out of sight. It happens, don't worry, Sandra. Okay, there will be a live stream, so people will be able to listen by following the live stream. Sounds yeah. like sticky. Again, <laughs> you're talking in local. Whoops, sorry. Hey, bro, can I have your linden bear? Hey, bro, I want your linden bear. Okay, we're coming to the top of the hour, and I'm going to do a couple of housekeeping things, <coughs> including having a bit of a cough, excuse me. <coughs> Lay off the cigarette, Sophia. Right, I'm going to ask people not to use voice today. It got really confusing yesterday with a lot of voice people. So I'm going to ask people to mute. Um, when it comes to asking questions, can you post your questions to Patch Linden or Donnie Davio? And they will do their best. Uh, they will part the questions and um, Patch will be asking them and then I'll be feeding um, them into the discussion. So please don't use voice audience members. Okay. 
I've got three minutes to go before the top of the hour. I'm going to hold till the top of the hour. Safia, I love your dress. <laughs> Thank you, but please don't use voice. Yes, send questions to Patch or Dormy. It's worth having two people doing it because Strangely enough, people can crash. I know you may be shocked to hear this. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'll post it again, Lexa. That's the address of the live stream. If you're having problems with voice, follow the live stream. Okay, top of the hour. Hello everyone and welcome to another Meet the Lindens. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to Oz Linden and April Linden. So today we are looking very much at the techie side of Second Life. We're going to be talking about um, various issues that have come up and we'll be hearing your questions as well and asking you to pass them to Dawny Devio or Patch London. And Patch is then going to feed them into the discussion. So welcome everyone. It's lovely to have such a huge crowd. And welcome Oz and April. I'm really excited to be talking to you both. Delighted to be back. Thank you. Thank you, Safia. And April, it's your first visit, I think, to one it of is. the Meet the Lindens. It is, and I'm incredibly nervous. Don't be. It's really, it's really friendly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is introduce you both, and then we'll start off with some general questions, and then I want to come on to some of the issues that uh, are particularly, I think, are particularly interesting to residents. Uh, so Oz, you're the Senior Director for Second Life Engineering and right. you spent you spent many years developing all sorts of networking code and you actually contributed to the development of HTTP. In my own way, yes. Right. <laughs> Uh, and open source SIP voice over IP. So right, which to... is also the protocol that's used to do voice for Second Life. Right. So I always understood that to be a sort of separate program that's kind of knitted in. Is it a, a, a London Lab proprietary program? No, no, it's not. It's uh, we have a we have a 
partner that that provides the voice services and create parts of their software into the viewer to do that. And of course, there's also bits in the in the simulator to tell you which which channels on their service to connect to. Brilliant. So they do a great then, job. I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't yeah. want to do it any other way. That that's that's cool. You were actually building telephone systems over the net, but you found that a bit dull. Well, yeah, uh, you know, telephones are telephones, um, and it was it was interesting for a while, but it it wasn't as much fun as I wanted my career to be. But uh, the particular product I worked on was also open source, and so I developed um, quite a bit of experience on on how to do open source and how not to. And when a friend of mine that, that was working here at the lab uh, heard that I was looking for something more fun to do, she suggested that I check this out. And that's it was my experience with open source uh, that got me in here and got me involved. And uh, then my role just evolved after that. Right. So were you actually a resident before you became I, I had made a, I had made an, my first Second Life account, I think, probably three or four years before I ever even thought about working at the lab. Um, and I had done a few things with it, but at the time, I didn't have a very good computer, and it was pretty difficult to use. So uh, I'm not, I wasn't then, um, much of, a, of a, an online gamer, and so uh, that um, I just didn't have a good setup for it. I did end up using um, that account for some of my job interviews, though. Um, oh, I had about half of the job interviews I did with the company uh, were in world. Hmm. Were you judged on things like um, your dexterity in walking upstairs? <laughs> I, I have no idea what I was judged on, actually, but uh, <laughs> it was. Um, but I think. Uh, it has it has always been my um, it it has always been my expectation that uh, anyone who interviews at the lab will have created a uh, an account and tried it before they talk to us. Yes, that really does make sense. That so many people do come from the resident community, uh, and we like it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I think residents do as well. So, April, tell me to you, you're the systems engineering manager for the Second Life Operations team. And you've been an operations engineer for over 20 years, I believe. That, that's right. I, I used to be a member of the team that I used to, oh, my bike's cutting up, sorry. Yeah, I used to be a member of the team that I now manage. Um, I was, I've only been in management for about 18 months, uh, right. so it's all, it's all still kind of new to me. Mm -hmm. But did you come the resident route too? I absolutely did. I've been in Second Life since 2006. Um, I actually own a couple of regions, um, and I am in world probably way more as a resident than I am. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I leave the lab, go home, and have some dinner, and then log in as a different account. So, <laughs> all the time in Second Life. That's wonderful. That's, uh, I think it's something the residents really appreciate. Would you agree, audience, that, um, that Lindens are residents too? Yes. Yeah, getting an enthusiastic response to this. Okay, so you love Second Life, and you also say that you love the power it has to change lives yeah. by providing people with a safe place to explore themselves. Yeah, I come from a background where, uh, well, I'll just, I'll just be frank, where LGBT issues were not really to be discussed. And it was through Second Life that gave me the power to the, the power and the anonymity and the, the courage, really, to learn more about myself. And Second Life gave me the power to make 
my life so much better. It's it's one of the reasons why I can I love working here is I you know, mm. platform this platform is so important to me. Um I want yes. to work here to, to to keep it going, you know? Yeah. I think that's true for so many people. They are uh, so many people have found it a, a place where they can explore themselves and find ways of living that they possibly couldn't in the real world. Correct. Yeah, exactly. It gave me the courage to, to be more than I was. And uh, I really appreciate Second Life for that. And you don't you don't get you don't get that kind of job satisfaction working on telephones. No, <laughs> no, no I, uh, I've only I've, I put I've only been in the lab for five and a half years, um, and this is way more fun than anything else I've ever done, and way more meaningful. Mm. The um, what were your first impressions when you came to work at the lab? I mean. You'd had a good spell of being a resident first, and then you came in uh, as a Linden April. As you came in, you hadn't done that much. Well, you'd been in Second Life a bit. But what were your first impressions when you came into the lab? Uh, well, we we call the introduction to, um, to working at the lab drinking from the fire hose. Um, there's... <laughs> There's just a tr an enormous amount to learn before you can even begin to figure out what's going on. Um, right. And uh, so uh, we, we used to have a, a really cute um, new hire process where you would get a, a bunch of um, basically bug reports. We used the same Jira that we used for taking bug reports, only they were private internal ones, and it was just a series of tasks to go into Second Life and do. Um, someone like April would have had a very easy time of it. For me, it was a little bit <laughs> trickier, but um, but uh, you learn you learn an awful lot very, very quickly, and there's just a tremendous amount to, to learn in the, uh, you know, software that's uh, been around as long as this is, it's a, is a big thing to learn all at once. Those, it's uh, kind of overwhelming, um, but it's as April said, it's tremendously fun place to work. A lot of great people and a lot of uh, a lot of fascinating lore to learn, um, as well as the technology. Yeah, coming from the myself, coming from the resident side, uh, and being as somewhat of a tech geek, uh, <laughs> I'd spent years trying to figure out and make guesses about how did second. Yes, but I and come to find out, I got you know, I had the the stuff that I had guessed was nothing like what it was actually like. But, it, <laughs> but that's it went down. <laughs> it, it seems to me that residents have kind of done so much with the tools, possibly in in completely unexpected ways. So that it's a bit like playing Jenga. I imagine that you know you pull a piece out carefully, and then that might occasion a collapse in a part you've not even thought about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably our most common reaction to a, a really new bug report is uh, the person will describe, "I've been doing such and such for a long time, and it has this effect, and that works, and it, I've built my entire second life around." being able to do this and your latest release of the viewer or the server or whatever breaks that and our usual first reaction is that worked we didn't know that that would work <laughs> uh, because yeah. people combine the different things we make possible make possible in intentionally in novel ways we hadn't thought of and uh, they're tremendously creative and Amazingly, um, often work even though we had no idea. Yeah, I like to say we take joy in figuring out when residents use our things in ways in ways we didn't even think were possible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, um, has anything surprised you in the introduction of Annie Mesh? Because that's the most recent big thing that's been introduced. I think. Has anything that residents do? 
with anime surprised you? Or are you now kind of hardened to the fact they're going to do amazing things? Oh, I've seen lots and lots of cool anime things, and nothing's really surprised me yet. But that's because I had really high expectations going in. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think that, that that characterizes it for me too. I haven't yet seen the uh, the completely unexpected thing yet. Mm -hmm. I, but it hasn't been that long. Yeah, it's it, it's coming. It takes time to figure out how to use our stuff like that. <laughs> I, I someone's just mentioned the Zuby babies, but I think he worked with Kei Tatsu uh, when you were developing Animesh, didn't you? Oh yeah. But uh, that was that was a development that we sort of expected. I mean, pets, babies, mm. uh, you know, dates. Yeah, dates. Sure, you know, um, uh, hiring a uh, hiring a stand-in to go to your <laughs> to go to a family wedding with, right? Right. Uh, how many romantic comedies have been built around that theme? Oh, that's true, yes. I, I hadn't thought of doing that. Yes, okay. Next time I've got a wedding, I will look for an animesh hunk to wear <laughs> on my shoulder. <laughs> okay. Um, what aspects of your job jobs would you say you love most? Gee, that's, that's tough. Um... I I think I think hearing about the uh, about the positive effects that people have in their own real lives from Second Life is really the most fulfilling thing. It's it's really the best, uh, and we get a pretty steady stream of those. And you know, every every now and then, there's a there's somebody will will write to someone, and of course we circulate these stories internally, um, and uh, that's. That's great. You, you don't get that working on web browsers or telephones, much less the other stuff I worked on long before. Yeah, and I was kind of stole my thunder. The same's kind of true for me. It's it's the thing that I love most about Second Life are the the residents that are here in this room. Uh, the fact that people are you know that we 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 help folks and and we and we it's it's just it's rewarding to me. And no matter how even when I'm having like. When I'm having, say, a really bad day, uh, I'm likely just to go, oh, I'm likely to go hang out with some folks. But I'm likely to go hang out with some folks in world for a little while just to get remind myself why I do what I do here, uh, mm -hmm. and it's always really re it's always really rewarding. Yes, it is, isn't it? Okay, so let's flip that slightly and say, what do you find most challenging? Another toughie. Uh, no, there's there's lots of um, difficult technical challenges, um, and and those are um, those are pretty much always there. Um, of those, I would say that the the big challenge is always figuring out how to way how to make how to introduce something new and better, how to improve something without breaking the way it used to work. Uh, maintaining backwards compatibility, which is something that we we really try to do. Um, we don't always succeed, um, but uh, we we try hard to maintain um, more backwards compatibility across a wider range of uh, systems than you know anywhere I've ever heard of. Really, I mean, it's just a mm. a, a very difficult problem. Um, that involves being being able to use backward compatibility not just with um, well, I mean with older operating systems as well. Um, yeah, sometimes the, the the operating systems but also the user content, right? We, if we, we try hard not to break content that people have built in the world and that's especially challenging because we often don't know about it until it breaks. Yes. 
Yes, because you just ne had no idea that the residents had merrily been doing something. Right. I remember an example of that was the, something that people were using to create mailing systems. So an update broke kind of all the mailing systems because no one had ever thought that people would be using this to do mailing systems. <laughs> I, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, the challenge on my side of the house is we're the folks that run the servers that make Second Life go. And mm -hmm. so when there's an outage, we're the ones that have to spring in to try to go fix it. Right. My, team, my team's the one that gets paged in the middle of the night uh, <sighs> when, when the grid is unhappy. And, right. And um, the challenge from there is, one, Second Life is so complex and so diverse because it was built by many generations of Lindens over, 50, over the last 15, 16 years. Mm. And each subsystem that Second Life has is a little different um, because each one is designed by a different group of people who are, you know, some of whom may be with the company, may not be with the company. It's mm. just we have to figure out each little piece and how it works, and we have to do it while Second Life is down and while we're rushing to try to get the grid back up. But, that's the adrenaline rush that you get when you work it. I can imagine that must that must be really tough if you can't actually go in and see what's gone wrong because it's gone wrong. Yeah, things will break, and the thing that caused it is something we weren't even sure could even do that. But we've got to figure all that out as we. It can be it can be pretty astonishing to read through the the chat the online chat conversations that April's team has to try to figure things out. Um, mm -hmm. They're just an amazing uh, group of people who um, have uh, a, a really a, a incredible set of skills. Uh, it, it, takes, mm -hmm. it takes a special group to do this, and I, my team's what we do. We, we live for this. <laughs> You live for the grid breaking. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it that way. <laughs> we live to fix things. <laughs> that's, that's You're a bunch of adrenaline junkies is what it is. <laughs> uh, I was going to say something that it seems to me you guys have been doing more recently is actually sharing what has happened when things have gone wrong. You, you make blog posts about this went wrong and why it went wrong, which I think residents really appreciate. Uh, and April is largely responsible for that, uh, yeah, that, okay. that change. Yeah, I can talk about that. Since, hmm. since I am a resident you know, at heart uh, and come from the resident side, when I get equally frustrated, like I used, you know, I run events in World sometimes, and before I was a Linden, I wouldn't like it when the grid when the, that the grid misbehaved when I was trying to run it. So I, you know, I from that, and so when things right, I, I like to share what happened. It, it helps. You know, it just helps make us look like we're, you know, look, look makes us look human, <laughs> and say, so, yeah, this is what happened, and, and, and what we're trying to do to keep from happening again. Mm -hmm. And you know. you're breaking up a bit, April. I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, I I just shoved the mic further into my face. We'll see if that helps. <laughs> okay. So yes, I I think people really appreciate um, the blog posts. I mean, I do. I don't always understand the technical side, but it helps to know that there was a logical problem, whether it was a piece of code that needed fixing or a server that went down somewhere and that you had to bring an alternative online. That's all great. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think most residents would be really surprised to hear how often something goes wrong and April's team handles it before they notice it. That's our goal usually is to get so you all don't even notice. We'll get yeah. paged often long before something actually gets visible in world and we try to keep it try to keep it fixed before it impacts the grid at all that's wonderful yes it's we, we never think about the ones that that get solved before they really become a problem but yes i can imagine yeah. that
a lot of notes. Okay, so I was going to ask um, about some of the things that have been coming um, recently. Uh, are you happy, Animesh? Um, are you happy with the way that's been going? I, from a from a product rollout point of view, I think so. Um, I don't know, April. Um, from a from from an operation standpoint, that's not something that really impacts us a whole lot. So I can't really speak from a, from a professional standpoint uh, on Animesh because that's all stuff that the viewers doing that magic that it creates without really changing a whole lot on the server side. Uh, but as a resident, I love seeing the stuff, but I don't really have any expectations because it's not really that really impacts operations very much. Right. Um, another innovation that's coming through, I wondered where we're going with the bakes on mesh. That one has had a whole bunch of rounds of small problems. Um, the most recent one is, is working its way through the deploy pipeline even as we speak. Um, but uh, I think it's going to turn out to be a, a great thing. It it turned out to be a little bit more difficult than we expected, and there was a little bit of feature creep, um, new things that got added as we as we went along because the folks in the content creators user group uh, said, "Well, you know," and I, I for example, there was um, the addition of being able to make the right and left arms different. Um, have different layers on them, um, wow. which was which was a new thing, and uh, that it, surprising number of those turned out to have uh, little glitches that um, messed something up somewhere. So we're still still working through that, but um, I think it's going to turn out to have been a really good thing, and I think it will make life um, uh, unusually. I think it will make life a little bit simpler for. How to, how to dress yourself in Second Life, which mm. the trend has been in the other direction for quite a while. Yes, um, Ruby Praga has just said, I would have thought Bakes on Mesh was more close to appliance, and you layer it with the mesh on top of it. Maybe I'm wrong, though. It's it's essentially another approach to solving the same problem that uh, that appliers are, are meant to solve. Right. Now, um, I I wanted here to have a question that I was sent earlier by um, Prokofi Nova, um, and that she uh, he was talking about mesh bouncing on mesh so that if I try and res a mesh object on a mesh floor, it won't res. Um, and on the one level, is there any way around that? Is there any way that we could make mesh res on mesh? And a second part is that when the mesh bounces and won't res, um, you get the message, can't res object at these coordinates because the owner of this land does not allow it. And that, the message you get even when you are the owner of the land. So there's no way. You, you're allowing yourself to do it. But it's not happening and you're being told it's because the owner doesn't allow it. Um, so, first of all, is there a way of solving the problem of mesh racing on mesh? And if there isn't, would it be possible to have a different message that sort of explains what's happening rather than saying the owner of the land isn't allowing it? Well, that, that latter part I can explain relatively easily. If you're up high off the ground, as many users are when they're building, uh, and you try to res something, the, the way we figure out where you're trying to res it is to draw a line from essentially your viewpoint to the thing 
that you're going to res on top of, right? When you click, if there's a line from you to that spot. Well, if you're putting it on something you can't res on, and whether that's a mesh or not, the line keeps going until it hits the ground. And that's, if you're up high, that's often going to be in somebody else's parcel. So even though you're in your own parcel, that doesn't mean that's where the line got drawn to. So that's where the confusion from that that message comes from is that you've drawn you you know that if you are if you're building on a skybox at 2,000 meters and you draw that line to something that's at a 45 degree angle down, <clears throat> you're probably in the next region or maybe a couple of regions away. So it, it, it's kind of difficult to do that. The why why it's difficult to do the, the physics to make it res on top of the other uh, on top of the other mesh has to do with what the physics representation of the mesh is. So it's a little it's a little tricky. Right. So it's unlikely that that thing can be changed. Well, it might be improved slightly, but it's uh, it, it is a confusing situation. Right. I think this is something most of us have experienced, so it's really useful to hear this. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to ask a couple more questions, and then I'm going to start taking questions from Patch uh, in the community. So let's have the discussion on last names, something that people have been asking for for years. OK. Uh, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the short form. Mm -hmm. Quickly, and then we can we can keep talking about it. The short form is last names wouldn't have been difficult. Last names would have been pretty easy. In fact, we basically still do last names. It's just that we give everyone the same last name. Mm -hmm. um, the hard part, and uh, you know, uh, I may have contributed to to making it the hard part because I overestimated how how difficult, or rather, underestimated how difficult it would be. The hard part is allowing you to change your name. What we didn't want to do was say, we're going to reintroduce last names, and all, but you can't ever change your last name, which means all of you who got, quote, stuck, unquote, with the last name resident are just out of luck, and you have to create new accounts. That didn't seem fair. So we said, we shouldn't just reintroduce last names. We should give people the ability to change their name. Um, and that turns out to be the tricky part. It turns right. out that every part of Second Life, absolutely everything, was built with the assumption that your name can never change. And that means that lots of things treat it as something that can be cached, and the cache never needs to be cleaned up or updated. And it has to be, and we have to go back and find that assumption everywhere in Second Life. And that's a lot of code. Um, so we're working on it. We're, we're sort of knocking it down one system at a time. Um, and uh, um, yeah, you would have thought that it was always based on a key. Um, it wasn't always. And um, the... The trick is that um, despite the fact that it was um, it was not maybe the best way to do it, to be saving names in different places, uh, it always worked because names could never change. Um, hmm. So it's the, it's the changing part that's working on it. But we are, <laughs> um, we are working our through, way through that process. And uh, we're getting there. We're making progress. Uh, we'll, we'll get it done. Eventually, um, I don't. I, it, anyone who's been to any of my um, my regular user group meetings knows I don't. I don't talk about making predictions about when things will come out until it's so close that I just can't be wrong. Um, as, but, as, as Oz and I sometimes joke, turned out this was a really hard problem. <laughs> yes. A really hard problem, and we didn't quite realize how hard it was until we started actually trying to do it. 
I, I can just imagine. I mean, okay, this is the nightmare scenario, and I don't want to freak anyone out here, but just imagine if you've got to be able to change your name and your inventory didn't recognize the new name, and suddenly you'd lost your entire inventory. Right. That would be like a major nightmare. That's the kind of stuff we're trying to not have happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what we don't want to have happen. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're, we're working on it, and we, we yes. are making progress. Yes. We, I think we're all behind you saying, yes, we really want you. We want last names, but we want you to get them right. We're, we're behind you with this. Okay. Yeah, we're we're working on it. It's it's uh, we're making we're making progress, and it'll be it'll be out eventually. Okay. So tell me about Eep and what's happening with Eep. So you remember I said that we always try to maintain backwards compatibility, and we aren't always perfectly successful. I'm afraid Eep, Eep is one of those projects. So. Um, in case you're not familiar with the acronym, it's an um, enhanced environment project. It's it's upgraded wind light, uh, for those of you familiar with the historical term. Um, so uh, a, a bunch of new environment effects, and most importantly, the ability to save the settings as, a, as an object. Um, that you can put in your inventory, that you can pass to other people, that you can buy and sell. Um, so uh, we're we're doing those, and and there are some new settings, uh, including things like being able to change the length of the second life day, so that you can make it match, for example, make it match a particular geography. Um, so uh, in my region, it, the um, day night cycle matches the Day night cycle at my home in New Hampshire. So my meetings generally take place in the daytime um, in the world, and there it's the same time of day at my house. So um, that's that's pretty neat, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and the project has we we didn't quite manage the backwards compatibility as smoothly as I had hoped to. Um, so uh, there have been a, a few things that have shown up black stars uh, on, on old viewers um, but it's uh, it's getting very very close it's had any time well our experience has been that any time we touch the the actual rendering system the gra the gra that draws the graphics uh, it's a it's a very difficult process in large part because there are lots and lots and lots of options and so we end up with a lot of things where um, if you've got advanced lighting mode on and shadows off and projectors on, but uh, you know, shininess on high, then you get something that looks different than it used to, and we try to get those to the same. But getting them right for all um, all cases um, and all the possible combinations of options is is pretty much a nightmare. Um, so. Uh, responding to the comment in chat about get sun direction, actually, if you have a new EAP viewer on a new EAP region, it does get the sun direction right, um, and it actually matches your settings, which it didn't used to do, hmm. um, which is which is cool. On on my personal regions, I took the time years ago to figure out how to make a custom day cycle. And I'm mm. super looking forward to the new stuff that comes in Eve that would make what took me days and days playing with stuff to, to get it, you know, different environmental effects at different times of the day to to all be so much easier to do. And I'm really looking forward to Eve. Mm. Um, Jim I know, loves the fact she'll be able to have days, proper days, not changing the day every four hours because she matches in Berlin. They follow an annual cycle, and uh, she wants to have one day in real life equaling one day in Second Life Berlin. So she'll be extremely grateful. Right. 
Well, that part actually already works. So if you if you get the Eat Viewer, you can set that. So just a dialogue setting in the uh, somewhere in the region settings. I forget. I guess this isn't a question for you, but for quite a few of us who probably use Firestorm, we're going to wonder when Firestorm is going to be bringing out EAP. Uh, they're following it very closely. I don't think it'll be um, long at all. That's good. Okay, so I um, I think um, we have a comment and then Patch, when we started talking about names, Patch got quite a few questions about that. So he's going to um, bring some in. Yeah, um, so I first of all I want to start off with a comment that Anara sent me sent me over. Uh, she says, uh, uh, she, you know, she she has admiration for both you, uh, Oz and April. Um, she wanted to pass on sincere thanks to April, especially in her team for all the effort they put into running a SL server environment, and especially to April also for her superb postmortem blog posts when things go wrong. They really are, as Sephia noted, an excellent and insightful read. Um, Appreciate them easily. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, on to names. So I have a whole bunch of questions about names. Uh, the first one uh, we'll start with uh, is actually a, a little technical. Um, it's it's really an inquiry around uh, you know how we how we plan to implement the name changes. Um, what are our thoughts on how we're going to Handle things like changing names, um, match the names of partners, uh, or something like that in World. Um, are we going to be able to maintain the same surnames we have? So, like the legacy surnames that are out there, and um, or are we going to have to pick from a names, or are they going to be locked into using surnames at all? The current plan is that. You will have to pick from a, a list, um, which uh, who's and the, and the the number of names on the list is not decided upon, and how frequently they will change is not decided upon. They will change from time to time, um, uh, like like it did before. Um, we at this point don't plan to reuse any of the names that were used before. Uh, resident became the default, um, so people with those names will still have old names. Um, the, uh, I, I'm aware that that, that is seen to be a valuable thing, um, so um, we'll, we'll keep that the way it is. Um, we have talked about accepting suggestions for what names should be added to the list. Um, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but uh, that certainly seems like a, a possible thing. It's certainly not a technology problem, obviously. Um, so um, there will be, you know, there will be a, a probably a web page off, off your account page somewhere that you can go to to select a new name. You will be able to put in an arbitrary name for the first name part, um, yes. but that will still have to be unique. Um, the combination of your new first name and your new last name will have to be one that has not been used by anybody ever. That sounds great. Right. Yeah. And so just to pick up on another question that kind of came out of the crowd just now, um, so changing first names will, in fact, also be possible. That's that's the plan. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah. And then another question about uh, names surrounding uh, sign up. Um, will new residents be able to have proper last name selection also at registration time? Uh, at this point, the plan is no. Um, and the reason for that is very simple. Uh, when Back when we had, uh, now, of course, that plan could change, and it would be relatively, from a technology point of view, it would be relatively easy to change. But what we found when we studied it back when people could pick that was that that was an unfamiliar thing. And that it 
seem to cause our rate of successful registrations went up when we took the last name choices away. Um, you'd be surprised at how difficult, at, at how how many different places there are in the whole new user experience to give up. And it turned out that that was one that That's people were bothered by having to pick a last name. So we'll give them the default land uh, name, which will probably remain resident. And um, uh, you know, we don't want to scare people off just by making them pick a second name. That's interesting. Uh, I mean, I can remember it was quite difficult for me to decide on a second last name, so I can understand how close it would have been of putting it for many people. Yeah, we do a lot of, we do a tremendous amount of measuring what happens, um, especially mm. in the new user process. Um, mm. And then I have kind of a converse question to all of this too. Um, folks are asking, uh, of course, if they could keep their uh, current last name as resident if they wanted to. I think that's already kind of been implied. But Oh yes, that's going to be the default. <laughs> Yep, sounds like it, especially if it's still going to persist through uh, registration. Um, a couple of folks have asked uh, about costs uh, and or why uh, why would we want to not offer this as a, a free option at the point of sign up or join? Uh, our intention to just monetize off of able to introduce name changes. Uh, well, I, I think... I think I sort of answered that. Is that it, 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 it intimidates people, it bothers people to have to pick a name at login, so we'll just do that for them and let them get into world and discover all the really good stuff. Um, and then changing a name, it, it, it does actually have a, both a social cost within the world and a, you know, a complexity um, outside the world. And it's not the sort of thing you want people to be able to do too frequently. Um, creates trouble. Um, so uh, one of the ways that we that we slow down things we don't want to go too fast is by charging money for them. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you think you, you would do that rather than just saying, hey, you can change? Well, I suppose if you change names once, maybe people who form relationships and want to share partners' names would want to change a second time. Uh, right. And we we don't plan on, at this point, the plan does not include um, changing, uh, putting artificial limits beyond the fact that it costs something to do it mm. um, on your ability to change names. Uh, we might end up re introducing something that says you can only do it once a week or something if we, if, if it becomes a problem, but um, the uh, or something of that nature. But uh, oh, gosh, that but, sounds so horribly complicated. It's bad enough <laughs> with people giving them those names with strange characters. If they were changing every week and shooting up and down my friends list, it would be, could be a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, um, I had a couple more questions to come in. Um, you know, if someone changes their name, like say they're on my friends list, uh, would I be notified? At, you know, notified in any way that uh, their name changed, or is that something I'll just have to discover on my own? Uh, we haven't addressed that. That's a that's an interesting question. Um, I can see providing maybe an, an update for your friends. That, that might be a good idea. Um, we haven't discussed it. Because mm. you could begin showing up as the new name. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, I think, I think also secondary to that implied with is, you know, of course, would that person, after having changed their name, still remain on, you know, my friends list? Yes. That's among the things that we have to make sure still works um, before we'll let people change names. Excuse me. Perfect. So, uh, slight technical question too, um, and, and you and you kind of touched on this, but you know, like when a name change happens and stuff, you know, 
is that also going to then update everything that's kind of resed out in world and things that have been created and potentially stored in inventory, like if I'm the creator of the object, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, and I think that probably dives into the technicality behind why it's a really complex thing for to solve. But right, the 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 goal is that yes, absolutely, everything will be updated. Now, it's almost certainly true that there will be some period of time during which that won't be perfectly correct because remember I said there are lots of places where names are saved temporarily in caches and you may not get the update uh, instantly everywhere. Um, but um, we'll, hopefully that will be a very short transition period. All right. Okay, I think then I've got uh, Kind of two last questions uh, surrounding names. Uh, the first one okay. is, uh, do we have any idea or direction on uh, what costs might look like and if it may potentially be a premium? Uh, as to that, you're talking to the wrong person. Um, fortunately, they don't let me decide how much things cost. Um, so uh, I build them, I make them work, other people figure out what they cost. So maybe that's a question for Abe tomorrow. Uh, and I, I seriously doubt he'll have an answer yet. We, it's the sort of question you don't need to come up with a, an answer for until you're done, basically. Um. Right. OK, thank you. Pat, yeah. have you had any questions on other topics? I, like I do. I've, I've got some other kind of general questions uh, and stuff. Um, we can just kind of dive into those, uh, mm -hmm. such as, uh, will we ever get more than 10 picks in our profile? Uh, some of you probably will. Yes. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that we might well include in, in uh, upgrades to premium, for example. Aha. Well, that, um, that, kind of, that kind of essentially arbitrary limit is the sort of thing that we usually consider for, for uh, account level changes, that kind of thing. So it's certainly possible. So what about um, groups? I'm not talking now about the number of groups, but would it be possible to uh, layer groups so that, I mean, if you now have an event, you end up joining about five or six groups for different aspects of it. Like even here at the birthday, I'm a member of the exhibitors group and the performers group, so it's taking up two group slots. I wondered if there could be a kind of subgroup level. Would that be a possibility? We haven't talked about it. Um, uh, as the, one, of the, one of the challenges with groups is that they've ended up being used for a lot of different purposes. And um, at this point, the efforts we've focused on with groups have mostly been with improving the performance and reliability of the, of the group messaging. Mm -hmm. systems. So we've got some changes in progress for that now, actually. Oh, that'll be interesting. So, Patch, have you got another general question for us? I, I, I do. Actually, this one um, probably leans more on the viewer side of things, uh, maybe even uh, for for April, Sunshine Heart wants to know: Is it true that the new Mac Pro finally meets the minimum system requirements for Second Life? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> she she threw Lyndon dollars at me to ask this question. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I, I, I can only imagine why. <laughs> as, in in a more serious line, her her question really is probably: uh, Is there any motion towards moving Second Life to metal on Mac OS X? Uh, as you want to say something? Uh, well, uh, there, we, there, there's two things on that. We, we know that Apple is making changes with respect to OpenGL, and that will be a challenge for us. Um, and uh, most importantly, um, I have an open rec to hire a senior graphics developer to add to the viewer development team. And I am desperately trying to hire that person. 
So if you know a senior graphics developer out there, anybody, please send them our way. Um, and I'm not going to comment on what we're going to do technology-wise, other than to say we're going to try to make the rendering pipeline both more stable and faster um, so that we can do lots of cool things in the future. But um, I need another developer to do it with, so please send them my way. Um, right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a job opportunity. Uh, as a fellow graphics developer, this is a job opportunity. And um, we will not. Um, Texas is fun. Texas is fun. We, the Second Life team is very distributed. Um, so uh, don't rule yourself out based on location. If you're in the U.S., um, there's, a, there's a reasonable chance that we can that we can hire you or relocate you. That's one of the um, really cool things about Linden Land. For example, my entire team, uh, the entire team of folks that I work with, I'm the only one that ever goes to an office for any amount of regularity. Uh, all my folks are uh, work remotely. Um, it's just a thing that Second Life allows us to do because having meetings is easy because we have. You just get to get uh, It would be hypocritical of me to. Uh, to uh, insist that people be in one of our relatively few offices. Um, but we do have offices here and there. If you like offices, we've got offices in Seattle, San Francisco, Boston, Atlanta. Um, and I'm, I'm in the office, the, the, the headquarters now in San Francisco myself. I, um, are, are you taking applications only from the US, or do you take them from other countries as well? At, at this point, um, that's the assumption. Um, if for the perfect candidate, I will go to EBE and argue. <laughs> OK. So if you're a graphics developer anywhere in the world and you are awesome, please apply. Especially if you have experience with Second Life, um, because we always like to hire residents. Um, it's. Uh, it's it's our top hiring priority right now. So I um I I know that moles actually come from across the globe. And that's something we'll certainly be talking about on Friday, I think. So there are roles you can have with um second with Linton Lab, even if you're a, you know across the world. All right, ready for the next? Yes. So uh, are there any changes coming to profiles in the viewer? Um, they've looked the same for a real long time. Uh, it'd be cool to maybe see some new stuff happening there. What's coming? I, I'm sorry, you broke up at the very beginning of that for me, Patch. What? Profiles. Are there profiles. any changes coming to profiles in the viewer? Oh, yes. Uh, there are. Um, we're, in fact, there's a. I think there's a project viewer out for that now. Um, we're we're putting there, the. Isn't, right. There, 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 you, there, 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 there is. An I'm, there is, and I'm using it. Uh, yeah. There is. <laughs> if you, we have a, we have a, a project right now out there to uh, look at uh, some of the older style profiles. Mm -hmm. You're fading again. I'm sorry, April. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 yeah, I quit talking. But yeah, we're definitely we're definitely we're definitely making some changes to that stuff. There is a project viewer out there that has a return of the the older style profiles, and it's there's actually there's actually a project viewer you can go download. Oh. And it's much faster than the uh, existing web profiles. Mm -hmm. so are we talking about your profiles when you sort of click on someone to find out all about them? Right. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And I, do you think you'll ever bring back? I remember when I first um, joined Second Life, you could actually vote people up and down in their profiles. Ratings. Ratings. Would you ever bring back ratings? 
I don't think so. I didn't uh, like it much. That, that, that's not on the that's not on the uh, on the roadmap for profiles at this point. Um, we're just improving the interface and making them perform better, um, and removing the differences between the the web versions and the in viewer versions. Um, we've had a lot of help from that from the Firestorm team, actually. Um, so that's great. Woodlands and Labs consider trying the web viewer idea again in future, like we had with SRGO, so that you could access Second Life through a web viewer. Absolutely. We have no predictions about when. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a. It's a, it, we know enough about it now to know that it's definitely possible. It works pretty well. Oh, wow. Um, uh, we've done, as, as people who've been paying attention to it um, will have noted, there have been three or four experiments um, that, that uh, other companies have done using in partnership with us. Uh, we even did one on our own for a, a little while. Um, and uh, what we haven't solved is how to make it affordable. So uh, uh, in time, we expect that problem to largely solve itself. Um, and when it looks as though it's a, uh, an economically viable thing to do, it would also be a significant amount of additional work for April's team um, managing those cloud. Essentially, it would be running a viewer for you it's what the way it's done is we run a viewer for you out on a machine in the in the cloud and those machines would have to be managed which is april's team yeah and that's not a small task but it, it, it we've done it before and like i says it works fine it's just expensive uh really expensive <laughs> right and uh, people aren't used to spending money per hour in second life so it's a it's a, an entirely different kind of model yeah, because people just move in and live here. Right. Okay, I was going to say, you're moving to the cloud, the, the move to the cloud. How's that going? Has it kind of completely gone to the cloud now? Uh, well, it's it's in progress. Um, we uh, And it's not something that we will generally provide very much in the way of updates on. That is, we're moving one component of Second Life at a time. We have, we made a list, what, what was it, April? It was hundreds of different yeah. components. I, I want to say it's like 200 or something that we had to wow. sort, start, 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 start sorting through. It was a huge number. Mm. Yeah, um, so we, uh, and we're, we're converting each of those things, you know, to, to move, we also have to move all the data from databases in our in our uh, current uh, data center to um, databases that are in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, generally speaking, we will avoid um, telling you when we've moved something because um, our experience is that whenever we mention that we've changed something. We begin getting lots of bug reports that blame that, and that kind of confuses the issue. Um, very often, it's nothing related, has nothing to do with it, um, but uh, it it sort of muddies the waters. Um, so we're trying to do good science and make everybody unaware. And then, if we get bug reports, if for example we were to move. Um, the login subsystem, then um, we and we started getting a lot of bug reports about I can't log in, we would know that those two things probably had something to do with each other. Um, right. Whereas if we had moved the inventory system and we started getting lots of bug reports about login, we would know that that probably wasn't the same thing. So. Right. Um, there are some things we've moved, um, and uh, <laughs> um, April's team is is largely responsible for this. Uh, April, we we moved inventory, most of the yeah. inventory. Yeah, over the last well, two, anywhere between six, two to six months ago, we started migrating inventories uh, to the. Then we have finished that process, 
and I'm not aware if anybody even really knows. Uh, so we're we're happy about that. We we didn't tell you, and we didn't get the bug reports. Right. <laughs> oh, which is good. Yes. Well, I must say my inventory, touch wood, seems to be fairly stable at the moment, and I'm not going to tell you how many items I've got in it. Well, I can tell you that it, the, that the cloud servers are way faster than anything that we ever had, and it's actually helped make things better because the new ones are way newer and way more efficient than anything. Anything yeah. that we ever had on our own, so it's been helpful. Yeah, it certainly seems very stable. Uh, touch well, we're, we're, touch, we're, we're touch. trying to we're trying to make we're trying to make more changes to make inventory even more stable and more uh, e easier for us to work on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, but the database contents have been moved. Not all the software that accesses it yet. But we're working on that part too. So, some months after we've done something, we might mention it, but unlikely oh, before then. Casually, in passing, second <laughs> life birthdays down the line. Oh yes, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> right, something like that. <laughs> okay, um, Patch. Any more questions for us? Oh yeah. Uh, so I have a question for April. What's an example of a problem that would be in progress that doesn't immediately affect the residents? Oh, that can be a, that's a really good question. That's when we are actively working on something, but we don't necessarily expect any impact to the grid itself. But we just want to give you a heads up that, hey, something is happening. Um, we, for example, grid rolls. We, we set those to in progress when we're actually rolling the grid. Those do impact residents, but they're so routine that we don't really expect any issues. Um, but it's just, it's a, it's a normal routine thing that happens. We're just letting you know that it's happening. Uh, that's a, that's usually the, the, the best example is a grid roll. I think we just did one this morning. Even. And I'm, that's, that, I don't know if I have anything to say about that really. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask something about um, grid trolls? Because I've been involved in a number of large-scale events, um, and obviously there are things where you restart a sim to get it. Sorry, Patch, you restart a region to get <laughs> it um, clean and fresh. So if you've got big dance performances going on on a region, so you would. Mm -hmm. Restart it before before the dancers come to set up. So, the, especially if you're having performance after performance, there's also like with something like the home and garden, we'll do a restart every morning when the regions are fairly quiet, so that again it kind of freshens the regions up. This is habit. We do it every year when we're doing big events like this. Is it necessary? Is it a good idea to be doing this, to restart and, and refresh? Oh, this is a tricky question. Um, I would like it to be true that there's no difference. Uh, Oz, it's safe to say that it, it, things do seem to run better when they're freshly started, uh, but we would very much like that to not be a true state. Mm. It's something that we're always working on to make that less and less true over time, mm -hmm. um, but it does seem to run a after things have after things have been restarted, right? Yeah, so. it's it's a it, it's in a perfect world. Well, it's it's what I call the law of theory and practice. In mm -hmm. theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. <laughs> so, yeah. in theory, we would like it to be true that it makes no difference whether you just restart at the region, but it actually sometimes does. Yeah, and we we try very we're trying very hard to make it so there's really no difference between it. Uh, that's always a goal. Mm. It's, it's an elusive goal at times. But until then, to be on the safe side, carry on pressing that button. Yeah, uh, um, I would. I would caution people that you know some of the some of the habits they've developed over the years are not always helpful. Um, the classic example being deleting your viewer cache at for any problem at all. Mm. Um, Generally speaking, all that will do is slow your viewer down while it has to reload all those textures. But um, 
but occasionally it can be it, it can be a, a, a helpful thing. So. Okay, Patch, let's turn to you. I, I've got a viewer question for us. Um, what's going to happen to the SL360 snapshot project viewer? Uh, it's not listed on the viewer page anymore. Um, this uh, resident Shanty was saying that it was really helping them show creations in SL through a VR headset. Yes, uh, we're we're going to we're going to put it back. Um, we it had just gotten so far behind the released viewers that we decided to retire it briefly. We have brought it back up to date, and it's in QA. And um, at some point, we will republish it. Um, there are still some problems to be solved with the graphics. Uh, remember what I said about hunting for a graphics developer? Um, uh, so um, we're, we, we are working on it. We're committed to doing that one. We will get back to it. We will finish it. And I will not give you a date. <laughs> soon, Tia. Soon. There's some version of soon, yes, for some value of soon. Uh, another general viewer technical question. Why is there such a low limit on texture memory, and would a higher setting really make that much better experience? Currently at 512 megabytes on our whereas most modern cards support gigabytes worth of RAM. Yeah, there, those two numbers are not directly comparable, actually, um, although people obviously associate them and they're not completely unrelated. Um, but on um, the short answer is yes, we will make that bigger. Uh, we have a we have an internal project that we're spending some time on. It's a little bit behind because uh, see previous note about graphics developers, um, but um, but we are working on a, a a new version that that makes caching better and allows more use of more RAM. The main reason that that limit has stayed so low over the years is that we have a lot of users that have very old, very um, quaint computers. Um, and if we allow people to set that too high on those systems, it's um, extremely bad. And um, we can just crash people before they even get a chance to get in. And it, it's very difficult to support. So, and it turns out that the very old software those people are often running lies about how, how much memory is available. So it's very difficult to detect in advance um, and prevent it. So in, we, are, we are committed to trying to make that number bigger for high-end users. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a little bit tricky. And there is a project where we've done it. Um, and when you see the, uh, well, uh, I will make sure it's highlighted in the in the release notes when that comes when that makes it to the, the public stage. Um, but That's uh, yeah, um, yeah, don't run Windows ninety eight. Really, it will be much better if you upgrade to Windows ten. Really, we have statistics to back this up. Okay, um, Patch, how many more questions we're we looking at? I still got a small handful. Um, I have a question about mobile. How are things coming along with mobile viewer development? Uh, I think we'll have a sort of an early alpha version soon, for some value of soon. I mean, it's actually coming along. Um, the early versions are this is only going to support logging in and chat. As far as I know, I think that's that'll probably be it in the first version. Um, but there should be a version out um, to test at some point in the not too terribly distant future. So, um, I'm for Radagast viewer. Uh, consent, well, in terms of functionality, yes, right. Um, it, it will be, it's the. Well, I'm not thinking of it. The first few versions, at least, as a viewer so much as a communicator. It's a way to maintain communication with Second Life um, without actually having to bring up a whole graphical interface, which I think for 
um, people who do business in Second Life uh, will be a very helpful thing. A mm. uh, question in relation to that. Um, is there any work planned or on the table for uh, making our various web properties, Marketplace, SecondLife.com, et cetera, more mobile uh, web browser friendly? Oh, yeah. The web team is um, is very much into that. Um, so any anytime we touch anything, they're they're trying to make that better. Um, some of them, marketplace being a pretty conspicuous example, um, are big and complicated. And doing that as well as we'd like is a very very big job that will have to take several rounds. But um, we're uh, we're working on that. Brilliant. Uh, Jihan, if you have a question, send it to it, Patch. Yeah. Um, how about inventory work? Uh, there hasn't been much talk about uh, if we have any plans for doing any work with inventory. Um, there's actually two particular questions, both relation to uh, structural changes uh, or any improvements to the interface of inventory, like uh, thumbnail viewing, uh, stuff for texture previewing. Uh, at this point, our work on inventory is mostly f focused on stability and performance. Um, I don't, we don't really have much in the way of, um, on the short-term roadmap at least, uh, in, in the way of changing the UI. Um, that's the sort of thing, though, that um, any open source developer who wants to improve the inventory user interface from the viewer, we will be more than happy to support that effort from from our side um, and take a contribution for it. Um, but uh, and I have no doubt that it could be improved. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not hard to imagine. OK, Patch, another one? I think we're coming to the end now. I'm just kind of sifting through uh, what I've got left here. Uh, is there any work being done in relation to the viewer and uh, you know rendering performance and such for big events like this uh, and making this particular experience a little better? Well, in in general, we we always want to try and make um, large large events better, um, and we we've, we've got quite a bit happening that's designed to help that. Um, we don't have any anything in, that we expect to deliver anytime soon. Okay. Um, someone sent a question directly to me. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you can answer this. Maybe you can. It's how many Lindens are there? Um, we're not supposed to answer that. Okay. So we, we, get, we get trouble if we answer that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> count, count the ones in the room, you know. That's the start. Enough that it makes a really good party. How's that? That sounds good. We've got three one on the question. stage. Huh? Yeah. I've got one last question about the cloud if we want to hit on it. OK. With the move to the cloud, is there any plan at some point in the future to offer larger region sizes? Ooh. Uh, I would not say that there is a plan. We have done some experiments, and some of the results were encouraging, and others were terrifying. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll see. Um, that isn't one of the primary motivations. Um, so uh, I don't think it'll be one of the early things we try to do in the cloud. 
um, but um, I'm much more I'm much more interested in being able to host regions in places that put them closer to where users are. Mm -hmm. um, right now, all regions are hosted in a single data center in the U.S., and that makes the speed of light limits how good the performance can be and the responsiveness of Second Life can be if you're very far away. Um, Europe, Asia, Australia, someone was commenting that they were in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, you have, if, if you've got that, uh, the viewer gives you your ping time if you go into the help. Um, and making that number smaller would make Second Life a lot better. So um, um, that's, that's a much more interesting thing um, that we'll do once we've gotten everything moved. At the moment, what we're trying to do is very carefully pick everything up, change it as little as we can, move it over, put it in the new hosting circumstances, um, and then we'll start worrying about um, evolving that into all the new possibilities that that gives us, um, which we're very excited about. But um, step one is getting it all up there. <clears throat> um, do you think by the time we come back here next year, it'll be job done and we'll be able to talk about other things and or we'll, and how wonderfully it went. She's, she's trying to get me to give them a date again, isn't she? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it'd be a nice day to enough. end on. I think it'd be a nice day to end on. Because we're coming to the end now of the questions. Yeah, I've got I've got my team behind me saying go sappers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oz, April, thank you so much for coming here today and talking to us. Uh, it's been brilliant and really enlightening. And I'm sure everyone here would like to echo a big thank you. I'd also like to say thank you to Patch for helping moderate this and all the other Lindens and Moles out there who've been keeping this on track. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, thank you all for making all of this possible because we're here for you all. Yes, Strawberry Linden gets gets uh, the credit for that wonderful picture of the two of us that we posted on the on the blog announcement. So thank um, you, Strawberry. I suspect one of the reasons you've taken Strawberry on board as a Linden is now you all look absolutely fantastic all the time. Oh, I'm not saying that that was the primary motivation, but it certainly <laughs> is a benefit. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, guys. April, I hope that this was fun. I know it, it was. It, it was okay. I, I Yes, it was. It was fun. <laughs> Good. You all did great. You were brilliant. Thank you so much, and it's lovely to see you. Let me just say a quick word about tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking to Ebe, uh, which is we'll be talking about all sorts of things, and I hope you'll be able to join us then. And on Thursday, I'm going to be talking to Strawberry herself and Ziola. And finally, on Friday, I'm going to be talking to the Moles. And you'll have a chance to find out about all the things they do. So, April and Oz, thank you so much for coming today. Patch and the team, thank you so much for all the work you've put in to get this going. And thank you, audience. You've been wonderful. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. All the talks are at 2 p.m. Yeah, get here early.
I'm trying to respond to all the requests for London Bears. Just give me a <laughs> bear with me because my, my IM window's going crazy. <laughs> Sorry. I, I heard what you did there. Well, you you I've never seen the viewer this busy. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you in about an hour when you get through them all. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I think I sat here until about, well, since I'm Eastern, um, I think I sat here until about 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, my cough has been a bit bad this evening, but I sneakily muted a few times so I wouldn't cough all over you. Yeah, Patch, I... Last night I just basically ran out on you because you were clearly deep in our ends for about ages. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the pile of IMs uh, for me is is growing <laughs> <laughs> with fair requests and stuff like that too. Right. I'm not sure if I have bears from you three. What? Can I say April's an adorable bunny? I just got a Wendy bear, yay! And a wolf! And a mouse! Oh, thank you guys, this is great. Yep, just so you know, voice is going to be going down on the regions. We can probably leave voice on the stage, but for the for the audience regions, we're going to go ahead and take it down. <laughs> 